deep thought uh you know if it's if it's hard going or if it needs a little bit of creativity then uh there's not really much point in me trying to do it certainly not trying to start it after three power to live more with joe dodds welcome to the power to live more podcast all about productivity organization well-being energy and resilience I'm Jo Dodds and I started this show to enable interesting people to share their stories about how they use their power to live more and by that I mean to do the stuff that they want to do more than the stuff that they need to or should do. It's about creating a life for yourself where you have the energy, health and space to be happy and fulfilled, spending your time as you'd like, whether that be at work, home or somewhere else entirely. That's your choice. Hello, my name is Ellie Dodds and I'm co-presenter. And today, Joe is interviewing Terry Pierce of 360 Learning Design. Joe and Terry met through Sharon Gaskin from show number 53, who runs a trainer's training company, where Joe spoke for a second time earlier this year. Terry introduced himself after Joe spoke, and they swapped some productivity tips so Joe knew he'd make a great guest. Terry is a learning design specialist and the founder of 360 Learning Design, a consultancy offering bespoke and tailored learning materials designed to organisations of all shapes and sizes. Back to the studio. Today I'm interviewing Terry Pierce of 360 Learning Design. Hi Terry, thanks for joining me. No problem at all, thank you for having me. So we uh, bumped into each other a few weeks ago at an event, didn't we, and uh, had a little chat about productivity. Yeah, one of uh, Sharon Gaskin's uh, Train to Align event, live events, I think. Exactly, and she was on our show, I don't know which number, a few a few weeks ago, so uh, yeah. we're, uh, you're in good company. <laughs> so tell us a bit about who you are, what you do, and where you do it. Yeah, so uh, I live in London, and uh, I'm based there running my own business uh, as a learning designer. So I... Uh, well, I started out really on my own as a as a trainer, having uh, having worked uh, in different organisations as a training trainer de- training delivery and kind of soft skills, personal development, communication, um, and uh, over the years uh, went through to kind of um, deciding that working on my own was what I really wanted to do, um, and then from there uh, worked out that. Uh, what I found most enjoyable and found myself to to really get into the flow of was when I was designing training materials and learning materials. So that's what I've really started to uh, specialise and focus on in my business now. So do you design for other people or do you design and then deliver? Uh, Some of both. Uh, Absolutely. Um, I think, you know, designing for other people is uh, a lot more exacting because you have to make sure it will make sense to somebody else. uh, so you know so there's some different skills involved but um absolutely do both yeah mm-hmm. and do you work from home yeah so uh, because i just still do delivery uh, i've got two modes of working which uh, are very different obviously i'm either in the training room which is uh you know full on you know even in your breaks and uh, lunches you are running about you're uh, trying to make sure everything's ready and uh, set for the next kind of curtain up um, or I'm at home generally, occasionally at client premises, but usually at home, uh, master of my own destiny, uh, you know, easily able to stare out the window for as long as I like, uh, should the mood <laughs> take me. <laughs> Which, of course, is creativity time, isn't it? Yeah, exactly, exactly. <laughs> so you've touched on it a bit, but tell us a bit more about why you do what you do. So um, is there a sort of backstory further than, than the sort of uh, having that flexibility by working on your own? Um, a little bit. I mean, uh, well, it's mostly accidental. I, uh, my dad actually did exactly what I do now. Um, and he kind of used to, to kind of bring home, you know, MBTI, uh, Myers-Briggs uh, tests and things like that and do them on us kids just kind of half for fun, <laughs> uh, yeah. which is interesting. I've got, I've got little reports from when I was kind of eight years old saying, Terry is not great at delegating and things like this, you know. But um, <laughs> Uh, I, I didn't actually consider in what, for one moment following in his footsteps. Um, and then uh, I wanted to do something very creative, I think, because I was going to university, did photography at university. Um, 
but just kind of uh, drifted a bit, um, didn't really follow a plan too much and eventually ended up uh, finding myself doing training within uh, a call center environment. Um, and uh, found that I really liked it, really enjoyed it, gave me a chance to do a bit of uh, creative stuff myself. Um, and uh, after a couple of moves in that kind of uh, career, I found myself working for a small consultancy, um, kind of uh, less than 10 people, and um, kind of saw how they were working with clients, saw how, uh, you know, start, started to see from that how easy it would be for me to, um, to, do it myself well not easy and it certainly hasn't turned out to be easy but plausible anyway. yeah, so, yeah it's that thing about <laughs> simple and easy isn't it so it's yeah. was it i can never get it the right way around but it's supposed to be something like it's simple but not easy or whatever it is <laughs> yeah absolutely no that's that's right yeah simple but not easy yeah uh which i discovered uh, i think i thought at the time maybe it would be both actually but yeah no definitely simple <laughs> not easy as i found over the last uh 13 years since i went it alone yeah yes yeah so you talked about having two modes, your delivery mode and your working from home mode. Mm. Do you then have like a personal life mode or is it integrated? How, how do you prioritize what you're doing, given you have got these sort of differences in, in where you're working, depending on what's happening in your work life? Yeah, they're, they're, they're a little tiny bit more interwoven uh, than that. I mean, I do certainly have times when I am absolutely in work mode all day and I certainly have days when I'm absolutely off. Uh, and I don't check my messages, um, but they, they kind of weave in and out of each other a little bit as uh, there's, there's, there's that term work life integration. And I, I, I guess I've kind of uh, discovered that a little bit um, by accident as I've gone. I've, I've kind of, you know, there's all that talk about work life uh, balance. And that was the buzz phrase. And I think it's, it's a great uh, concept for a lot of people. But uh, I do think that, you know, sometimes I would, that idea would stop me or did used to stop me. Um, Kind of, you know, if I if I thought to myself, well, actually, I've got a little thought about this project that I could make a little bit of headway with, but you know, it's nine o'clock in the evening on a Friday or whatever, so I probably shouldn't be doing that. But actually, um, kind of getting past that has allowed me to use that energy that I might have at that time um, and do a little bit of the reverse. I think, you know, so if I am at home and it is a really nice day outside, then I might just um, you know, grab my guitar and go and sit in the garden and have a little bit of a strum in the sun rather than think, oh, no, I must be working. Mm. It's interesting, isn't it? I, I, do you think that's a, a sort of time since being in corporate type thing? Because I, I certainly feel that when I first started my business, which was also 13 years ago, that uh, I, I sort of was a bit nine to five because, well, nine to five and then loads more because <laughs> um, yeah. that's what I felt I should do. And actually, as I've gone on, I've developed... A much more flexible uh, way and I, I've also got quite bullish about it so you know when I have discussions with other people and I, I went to um, a singing tour recently abroad with some uh, choir friends and the, the, I, I noticed that particularly the, the sort of baby boomer retired people were quite traumatized that I was actually working whilst I was away but I was making the point that actually that you know having that flexibility allows me to be here <laughs> but I don't need to go to the zoo with you today because I've got things to do and I'm quite happy to not go but then tomorrow I'll be able to do something because I've done what I need to do today and I think you know I've developed that over the years I certainly didn't do that at the beginning is, is that sort of how it happened for you yeah absolutely yeah. absolutely and I think I think you're right you know you kind of just take on uh the assumptions of some of the people around you and, and yeah certainly I've kind of realized gradually uh, almost kind of um you know accidentally that it doesn't really need to be that way and there's a lot of benefits to not uh, and it kind of feeds in I think to some of the things that I do where um you know it, I, I try and use uh slack time and dead time quite a lot and that might be time when I'm traveling and I might be traveling for a personal reason but actually if I'm sitting on a train for an hour then I might do a bit of work because you mm -hmm. know, it's relatively unusable time otherwise that kind of stuff yes yeah absolutely and I agree so what about getting things done do you have a particular routine to make sure that you get your tasks done how, how does that work yeah I've, I've, I've tried lots of different ways of doing things uh I, I think I'm quite a I have kind of two quite distinct sides to my character in terms of being uh, quite keen on planning things and, and thinking things through and sometimes doing nice color coded plans. Um, 
but on the other hand, being quite spontaneous and liking to be led by my energy, uh, by whatever seems to have momentum, things like that. So, um, you know, I've tried lots of different ways of doing it. And the way that I've kind of arrived at more recently is really just to um, do a certain amount of planning via um well via my whiteboard i've got a big whiteboard which i'm sitting in front of now looking at and it's got kind of all these different post-its and cards and uh scrawlings in uh different kind of uh different pens uh, all over it a lot of which is is relatively detailed planning or lists or little diagrams um but because i see them all laid out in front of me it allows me to have that spontaneous thing of okay well i'm going to focus in and zoom on that one or i'm going to have a thought about that one um the whiteboard is one example of how I try and do that, but I also do it a little bit online using apps like Trello uh, and things like that. Mm. It's interesting when you're saying that uh, you like sort of structured planning, but then you also like to go where the energy takes you. That reminded me of me, but I, I, I'm, I'm thinking I'm going to reframe it as that. We were talking before we came on, didn't we, weren't we, about um, procrastinating on a particular project that I've got at the moment. And mm. uh, I could I could frame it in I'm just going where my energy takes me and being more flexible when really <laughs> I know that I'm avoiding doing those videos yeah, that I need to do. <laughs> absolutely, you've got to be a little bit careful with it, and I, I absolutely uh, don't want to give the impression that I've got it 100 percent right because um, yeah, sometimes I kind of uh, find myself an hour down a certain road and I think, hmm, hang on a second, yeah. It is interesting though because I um. I do find even when I'm doing that, where I in you know in my sort of uh, sensible head saying you're procrastinating, get on with it. Um, quite often it all comes together, and I look back and think actually that was there was a reason why I wasn't doing it at that time because I needed a bit more creative time before I did it, or you know whatever it might be. There's I, quite often when I reflect back, there's there's a benefit to having done what I, what at the time I thought was a problem. And I see yeah. that in little Dodsey and my daughter, who's the co-host on, on the podcast. She's only 11. And I see the same with her, but for the fact that she's not very good at estimating how long it takes to do things yet. So sometimes she yeah. misses the deadline. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, you get that experience a little bit of how long you can leave it, hopefully, over time. But uh, yeah, no, absolutely. I think procrastination can really uh, sometimes help with creativity. Uh, again, you can use that as an excuse. I read in a book, um, Originals by Adam Grant recently, uh, about Martin Luther King uh, procrastinating over the I Have a Dream speech and writing most or, or getting it together in the form that it was uh, eventually kind of delivered in mostly on the night before. Um, and actually, the I Have a Dream bit was almost completely impromptu, that little bit itself, um, mm -hmm. because, you know, he, he wanted to kind of leave himself to kind of soak up the atmosphere of what was going on right at that moment and 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 react accordingly yes yeah that's really interesting so what about uh, tools and apps you've talked about trello you've got your whiteboard what what other um tools are you using um i, I like to make sure that i uh have somewhere that i can put all of my thoughts uh, as i'm having them so i do kind of uh, i used to use evernote but i found uh, spending too much time uh putting you know indexing and uh, kind of uh, you know, working around the edges of things. So I've uh, gone with Google Keep as a bit of a simpler version for the same kind of stuff. Oh, I've not come there. across that. Can you tell us more oh, about that? What's that? Google Keep, yeah, it's, it's almost like a little kind of uh, pin board uh, of uh, kind of post-its, uh, which you can put as much detail as you want on. You can put links on them. You can put, um, you know, you can just write into them and then you can color code them. You can tag them those kind of things, but you, the view that you get if you don't search for a particular tag is, is all of them. Uh, so you can kind of, uh, I mean, they're, they're, they're minimized if they're quite large ones, so you don't see the whole text if you've got masses of text on each one. Um, but I quite like the, the way that that allows you to look at the wholeness of it. You can kind of scroll through all of them and see which ones pop out as something you want to work on, something you want to uh, use as a bit of inspiration. So when mm -hmm. I have, for instance, an idea about uh, a, um, you know, so just some new learning point that I'd like to work into a training session or some new uh, piece of kind of learning that uh, I, I want to base an exercise on, then I might just pop it on there and then kind of uh, look over there as I'm designing different things or as I'm kind of uh, trying to consolidate uh, a period when I haven't been able to kind of consolidate. Mm. 
that's interesting it strikes me you're a visual person i i always say i'm a visual yeah. person but i like lists rather than pictures or so mind maps have never worked for me and it's interesting i was looking at dropbox today on my ipad and mm. the default view was the folders you know as in across the page you know blue folders um and i thought oh oh and i quickly changed it to you know a list because that <laughs> that's what suits me so it's interesting isn't it that uh, you're, you're you're traumatizing me talking about google keep and having all this information like there <laughs> It's funny yeah. how we have different styles, isn't it? Yeah, but I, th I think that's really important to go with your style. I think I've, 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 that's one of the biggest things that I've learned over the years, actually, I think, is, is to, uh, and when I deliver sessions on kind of uh, productivity, you know, I, I sometimes see uh, books or, or other training sessions where, you know, things are very prescriptive and it's like, okay, you have to do it this way. This is the way, you know, you have to use Stephen Covey's matrix of importance versus urgency or whatever else. And actually, I think you have to, you have to understand your style and what works well for you and, and try and swim with it rather than against it absolutely mm, yeah yeah exactly that's why i don't use trello <laughs> <laughs> which i'm also quite a big fan of yeah yeah um <laughs> yeah the, the visual thing i think is quite interesting as well because um i think i think for me uh being a visual person means wanting kind of all things at once um and and a, kind of lists and so on are quite sequential i remember mm. um reading about people who'd regained their sight after not having their sight for a while having difficulty because all of their information that they'd taken in was quite sequential because they would touch one thing and then touch another you can't touch everything at once but right. um but when you get your sight when you're visual and, and you're using your, your visual senses you're suddenly uh seeing you know everything at once um so yeah if that's your preference then uh, that, that's what works for me yeah it's interesting i thought i've I've always said I was, I, I was visual, although I, I'm sort of quite auditory as well. But it, it's interesting that um, I remember I remember being at school and doing a, um, a German exam, in fact, and they told us a piece of vocabulary that we didn't know yet and we needed it for the exam. And they told it to us and I, I wrote it at the top of my book at a certain angle. And I remember sitting in the exam, being able to picture the page and picture this bit of writing at the top of the page couldn't read the word <laughs> so, so it was of no use because I couldn't actually use it but I knew where it was on the page in my book uh, mm. because of that visual recall um, so it's interesting that I do think I do have that um, you know visual um, you know preference but still in in a you know a, a list rather than in pictures it's interesting isn't it mm. yeah mm. so do you work on your own do you work with other people do you outsource stuff how do you um get things done is it just you or other people too yeah i was looking through the the uh the five s's and uh thinking about different things that i that i that i do and actually i think share is possibly my weakest in terms of the way that i work on my on my own business um mm. and it's something that's really come home to me recently since uh joining uh the community that we mentioned earlier the trainer talk community um of freelance trainers uh and and you know i've got such a lot of kind of support and sounding board help from that um and i think it kind of uh woke me up a little bit to how much i'd kind of been you know forging ahead on my own and with my own ideas and uh and not soaking up up enough from kind of uh you know just supportive colleagues i guess um yeah, yeah. so it's I don't really outsource, uh, although I have recently started to use Fiverr to outsource some things to do with my website, which has been really good. Um, mm. But uh, yeah, just only just kind of really started to to kind of network well with uh, kind of people who do similar things to me who can uh, perhaps support and offer new perspectives and ideas, uh, perhaps as much as I should. Yeah, and it's interesting that you sort of identified that because quite often when we talk about the share. Uh, S out of the five S's we we do talk about you know outsourcing and delegation but actually as you say that the some of the power of the the share bit is around just having that support network around you of people that you can ask questions of or that give you you know help spark ideas and so on and I, I often forget I guess to ask that when I'm doing these interviews and I think that's you know really good to, to 
bring up as you say Sharon's group is is a really supportive group I mean like, it's really active and you know the amount of people who come on saying you know can I just ask a question or does anyone know this or, or whatever and then everyone like dives in with their responses I think um, mm. we, we do underestimate how much that can really help us don't we yeah no absolutely uh you know i think it's that unknown unknowns thing as well you know it, i think when i had if i'd have had a problem that i thought right i need help with this i can't do it then i would go and find somebody um but it's yeah. the unknown unknowns it's just the, the things that the value that people can add and bring that you don't even know is out there uh, which mm. is certainly been the case for me with a lot of uh business development help um and just tweaks to the way that i do things not so much in terms of the actual training element although occasionally that but in terms of the running a business element certainly yeah and i think it, that with fiverr the same thing applies i keep thinking um i must go and have a look and see what else people are offering because i i use it myself as well but i use it for stuff that i need to get done that either i can't do or i don't want to do or whatever but actually i keep thinking you know when i've got five minutes when i'm on that train <laughs> like you said um yeah. you know, i need to go and have a look and see what people are offering because actually there's probably tons of stuff people can help me to do that i just haven't even thought about yet yeah absolutely loads of stuff um mm -hmm. you know I'm, I'm, I'm kind of some some of the things that are on there i want to do just because they're there not because i can buy <laughs> yeah. them. i want to get a chat bot. i don't know what i'll do with it but it sounds really interesting <laughs> I love that. A friend years ago sent us a, a, um, a video of Father Christmas saying happy Merry Christmas to to Ellie when she was uh, about four or something. And it was that was offered on Fiverr. Somebody, you know, obviously dressed up and just did a job lot for them. And uh, I, I always thought after that, you know, there's so, so much um, out there that, that we can get that we just don't know about sort of thing. Not that that's particularly helpful to, you know, the business. <laughs> <laughs> but there you go. Business. Yeah. So what about... Um, the self-care bit how do you make sure that you're fit enough and healthy enough to, to do what you need to do what, what sort of things do you do to keep healthy yeah uh, this is one of the areas where um me being a kind of uh typical kind of butterfly type extrovert you know the, the kind of real yellow energy kind of extrovert and people centered type person uh my problem is more in keeping it to a manageable number of things um <laughs> You know that, that uh, which is something I've started to do to kind of funnel it down and say, well, actually, it's, it's better to perhaps focus on a few quality things. But that's taken a long time to kind of come to that realization. Um, but I mean, some of the the main things that I do uh, out of walking, uh, we, my, myself, and my wife, go on a lot of walking holidays. Just in the last year, we've been to Nepal and uh, with a friend, I walked along Hadrian's Wall, um, and uh, we went with some some amazing walks when we visited New Zealand earlier this year. Um, so that's a big thing. Um, I'm a huge uh, lover of festivals. Um, I've been to every Glastonbury festival except one since about 92. Wow. Um, <laughs> that's a big thing uh, for me. And um, uh, I love reading. I read a lot. I do my 50 book challenge. Uh, and this year I'm actually probably going to hit 50 in about July. So that's pretty good. And is that fiction or non-fiction or both? Uh, both, yeah. I like. I really, really like to keep a balance of both. Uh, I do uh, a lot of kind of uh, pop science and also kind of uh, you know what we call smart thinking, that kind of stuff. Um, but also, yeah, love novels uh, and science fiction in particular. A lot of um, yeah things that make me think. Mm. Uh, mm -hmm. probably, probably a bit of a, uh, a snob. I don't read too many kind of what you would call airport novels. Uh, stuff that makes my brain think. <laughs> the airport novels makes me laugh my uh my dad traveled a lot um for his uh business in the 70s so flew a lot and he my mum used to go with him sometimes and uh he'd regularly pick up a book uh at the airport read it on the plane and then chuck it in the bin at the other end and she used to get incensed uh, incensed about that because you know it was a waste <laughs> and all that sort of stuff but also she'd want to read the book so she'd like take them off him um <laughs> to then read and uh but i remember her saying that he regularly used to buy airport crash type novels and <laughs> not airport airplane you know like so there'd be some sort of horrendous accident the plane would drop out of the sky blah 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 and she'd let him throw those ones away because she couldn't cope with reading them and having to fly home afterwards <laughs> yeah that's understandable <laughs> that's right, <laughs> yeah it says something about my dad i think <laughs> uh so um, what about relaxation then so it sounds like the walking and the reading um oh. helps with that do you particularly make time for that 
Yeah, I mean, you know, a lot of that stuff, uh, well, so sorry, the walking certainly uh, is more of a kind of, uh, you know, holiday thing, whether that's a small thing at the weekends or a, or a large type holiday. But certainly for things like reading uh, and I try and write a little bit as well, uh, that kind of stuff, I, I, I try and make time for that. Like I was saying with the um, with the uh, World Life Integration stuff, I, you know, I, I d- depends when I've got my energy. I'm very uh, morning focused. So I will usually try, well, I need to try actually. My body just gets me up at uh, seven at the latest every single day, no matter what time I got to bed. Mm-hmm. Um, so I will get up early and get stuck into stuff. Um, and usually that's work, uh, but sometimes it might be a little bit of writing or something else. Um, and yeah, and then, uh, you know, when I have my afternoon uh, kind of dip, uh it'll be a dip not in an absolute sense necessarily but a dip in terms of the type of work that i've been doing or not you know a, a lack of variation so I'll, I'll switch to something else or um or i'll go for a walk with the dog that we borrow which uh which is one of my favorite things to do for a little bit of extra energy in the day and is that something you particularly have identified that you have sort of different energies for different things during the day or is it just how it works out yeah no absolutely um you know i I think uh if it needs deep thought uh you know if it's if it's hard going or if it needs a little bit of creativity then uh there's not really much point in me trying to do it certainly not trying to start it after three um but for me you know uh getting up and getting straight into it seven uh can be really good uh or even earlier sometimes um but yeah you know something that uh i can enjoy a bit more and just kind of relax because i've got something behind me because i've already achieved something then you know three or four in the afternoon is a great time to do that and then i find i've often got more energy to then perhaps pick something up from kind of five until seven whereas you know if i tried to work straight through i'd have just had some pretty low quality time low quality work from from three onwards Mm -hmm. yeah so what about learning and improving yourself then you you said that you obviously read quite a lot um i know you said you'd listen to some of my podcasts before you came on here so i'll, I'll take that as a as a podcast interest maybe <laughs> but uh, oh, yeah. in your yeah. role as well how do you, sorry sorry yeah <laughs> no go on i was just gonna say so you know how, how do you sort of ensure that you're learning and improving and and i guess you know in your role that's part of what you do for other people isn't it so i guess you must uh, focus on that for yourself too yeah absolutely um you know i i, I kind of do a, a lot of uh web browsing on those kind of things but i do a lot of reading uh the non-fiction that i read there's uh some things that have uh, you know definitely made their way into what i do work-wise um and i do a lot of that reading actually on audible uh the audiobook so um again with that kind of taking up the slack and not having any dead time you know if I'm walking about then I've got my uh, audible on and my headphones on and I'll be learning about you know um uh you know well uh one of my favorite books of that kind of vein for instance is uh, thinking fast and slow by Daniel Kahneman which is about yeah. how we, uh yeah about how we kind of uh don't always think as logically as we think we do um and how to kind of get around some of that so some of that kind of stuff perhaps it's interesting. I um I listen to lots of podcasts, but I really struggle to maintain interest in Audible. And I don't know if it's because the podcasts are sort of time bound, and I know that they're only going to be, you know, twenty minutes an hour, or whatever. And that the the I can't going back to what you're saying about you know visual and auditory. I can read books, you know, for hours and and come dip in and out really happily. But Audible, it just I, I still I keep going back to it and I keep forcing myself to to use it but it, it it's not natural for me and i'm not really entirely sure why that's interesting considering you were saying that you're not so much perhaps of a visual person as well yes so yeah amazing. but i am a reader and I always have been so mm-hmm. perhaps you know the switch to, to to audio is you know not so natural for me other than the fact as i say i listen to tons and tons of podcasts so mm-hmm. it's, mm, it's interesting maybe it's that um you know there's a lot of talk isn't there about our um attention spans being you know lower than they have been in the past and maybe i mean mine's never been great to be fair if you ask my teachers <laughs> i don't know how do you find that with your audible do you, you know if you you're dipping in and out i mean i suppose for me i like to read chapters in in entirety when i'm when i'm reading i suppose that's perhaps that's what it is i, I read a chapter and that's yeah. what i must do in yeah. order to 
stop. But in you know listening terms, that doesn't work in the same way. Yeah, no, I, I'm I'm very much the same actually. I like to read a chapter, but something that I've started to discover more recently with both audio, audio and uh, and and reading books and a lot of other types of tasks as well is that I think there's a power in kind of unfinishedness. But even though I do like things to be finished, I like things to be neat, I like them to be tied off. Um, I think that actually if you kind of have left something in the middle, it's almost like that kind of cliffhanger, you know, at the end of uh, a box, you know, the uh, latest episode of a box set or whatever. Um, you kind of, uh, it's something that, that's then drawing you back, um, which, you know, is, is uh, sometimes means that with the Audible, you might need to go back and uh, skip back, you know, a minute or two just to get a little overlap so that you can not mid-sentence or something. But, yeah, I find that that can actually be quite motivating. Mm, maybe I need to reframe. <laughs> <laughs> so any other books or podcasts or resources that, that you'd recommend? Um, so, yeah, there's quite a few books that I really like. I quite like, uh, I've read, read recently um, Susan Cain's Quiet, uh, The Power of Introverts in a World That Just Can't Stop Talking. Yes, I, I love that one. Yeah, I found that so interesting. Uh, something that I've always kind of felt, kind of her message, well, and, and read in, in some other ways and in some other places, but I think she, she draws together so many different resources and ideas about why we undervalue introverts and uh, prioritise extroverts and you know the downsides of that definitely mm. um uh i uh i quite like um so, some slightly different things as well i like the whole smart thinking genre but uh, uh i'm quite keen on uh the idea of slightly different points of view like uh, uh zen um so stuff like alan watts or um zen and the art of motorcycle maintenance if you've ever read that I have heard of it, but I don't actually know what it's about. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, it's a really kind of strange uh, book. And it, and it does kind of, it's not exactly about Zen, but it is about the idea of uh, the logical mode of thinking uh, versus the kind of uh, passion and feeling uh, based uh, part of, of, our, of ourselves and our brains and how actually we trend, tend to um prioritize one over the other and quite often in our society the logical part um and it's kind of a little bit about integrating both uh and trying to understand how we can be kind of more unified kind of beings which i guess really appeals to me uh in terms of the the kind of um the, the idea of like i was saying earlier you know being in touch with the spontaneous side of myself and uh a bit about enjoying life and having fun but at the same time, making plans and being logical and being structured, uh, you know, I think one of my most important things probably is trying to uh, maintain that balance. Oh. Mm -hmm. And um, and the motorcycle bit. <laughs> yeah, that's the, the, the whole book is a big allegory. So the motorcycle bit is, is what he uses a lot of the time. So, you know, he's, he's on a motorcycle trip with uh, friends of his and, uh, you know, they have different attitudes to what, could possibly be wrong with their bikes or you know how long they can possibly ride in a day and, and different things that kind of give rise to some of these little zen lessons right okay cool lovely that sounds interesting yeah. is that your list done or have you have, have you got more <laughs> um i'm just looking at the notes that i made if there's anything else in particular that uh i mean i could go on all day about different books that i like but um <laughs> kinds of resources um uh, I do use uh, Google, my Google Calendar a lot. Uh, I don't know how to live without that. Um, I definitely kind of make sure that and that's another way for me to try and keep a good balance between uh, fun stuff, work stuff, other stuff. Uh, you yeah. know, I use color, color coding there to try and see, you know, how much of each type I've got stacked up in my next few weeks, uh, mm -hmm. and you know, if I'm if I'm missing anything. Yeah, that sounds interesting. Yeah, it's not something I've I've uh, used. I, I use different calendars that are different colours, but I hadn't thought about colour co uh, not colour coordinating, colour coding. Uh, what what's in there? Mm. Yeah, mm. I use it a lot. Like I said, I use it on Google Keep and on Trello as well. So I just find, it, particularly when I've got this kind of visual thing where I'm trying to look at all of my priorities and work out which ones are linked or which ones are under cooked or or, or so mm. on. Um, mm. And a colour can help me to draw, uh, you know, uh, focus on one at a time. Mm. 
Oh. Mm, yeah. See, I don't do color coding either. Maybe I'm just not visual at all. I've just been um, <laughs> telling myself a story for ages. <laughs> so, what about uh, sustain then? How about how about um, keeping things going and and sort of creating routines, rituals, that sort of thing? Like what? Yeah. I mean, you talked about things like uh, borrowing a dog. We do that too, and that that can help mm. you to do things like go for those walks that you might not yeah. fit in otherwise, and things like that. What, what else do you do? Um. I, I think you know having a routine of being up early uh, helps, uh, and trying not to um, I think trying not to diffuse my attention too much. Uh, I, I find a big thing early in the morning, in particular. I think if, you know there can be some days, or there used to be some days, I'd get up and I'd check Facebook, uh, perhaps while I was just getting ready or getting my breakfast or whatever, and then I'd start thinking about somebody that someone had said that was annoying on there or something, or you know I'd read a news article and and you know. And, and my brain would just start to kind of just go off on all these little tangents or bits of it would be distracted running certain, you know, uh, programs, I guess. Uh, so uh, trying not to open too many little bits of my brain and, and then for maintain focus uh, at that early stage in the morning when I've got a lot of energy it means that I compile a lot of stuff into a lot of energy into the one thing uh, that I'm trying to do. So uh, that's mm -hmm. a big thing for me. Yeah. Uh, and taking breaks, I think, is massive for me in terms of keeping things going. Um, and it's something I didn't used to do. I used to, <laughs> I used to tell people to do it in my, uh, you know, uh, in my training sessions about uh, about um, uh, productivity and about time management. Um, but yeah. then, kind of, you know, do that exact same thing of, oh, I don't need to, and you know, I can't afford the time. Um, but it, it really, really works. Uh, if I've had 15 minutes, then uh, I make that 15 minutes back up absolutely uh, in the next hour or two in terms of extra stuff, in terms of not doing things twice, in terms of not making mistakes, in terms of being more creative, more productive, definitely. Yeah, and no, I agree. I, t I tend to do that when my computer's running slow or it's all going horribly wrong. And then, as you say, realise that actually I should have done that about two hours ago. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. And then you can procrastinate, if you want to call it that, for those 20 minutes, and then maybe you come up with a brainwave about that thing you were stuck about. So. Yes, yeah, exactly. So what about on those days when things don't go right, when you have a bit of a bad day, it's all gone a bit horribly wrong? How, how do you deal with those? Yeah, um, I think for me the most important thing about that is uh, the idea of the, 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 the E plus R equals O little equation. I don't know if you've seen that. Oh, I don't know. Carry on. <laughs> yeah, so e, e plus R equals O is event plus response equals outcome. Okay. Um, yeah. which makes perfect sense but I think a lot of the time we kind of almost feel like uh it's just event equals outcome and we're just passive kind of observers in life uh but in particular in uh you know in terms of our emotions so if we're feeling an emotion then we're kind of almost owned by that emotion so if I'm feeling that things haven't gone right if I've been frustrated or if I feel like I have uh you know have messed up or uh anything like that then you know I realize that that's I try to realize and, I, and you know this process is not always perfect doesn't always work the first time but but just the, the process of trying to realize that actually that is a response on my part and I can try and work on it I can own it um, rather than it owning me um, is a huge first step on that road yes yeah 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 I like that so what's it again e plus <laughs> R oh, equals A. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah, exactly. Response equals outcome. I'm not sure if it's attributed really. I'm, I have heard it attributed to Eleanor Roosevelt, actually, but uh, oddly enough, oh. but, um, I'm not 100% sure about that. No, um, yeah. yeah, it's pretty yeah. good. Um, and then, you know, working on that R, I kind of I, I think of the idea of kind of state management that actually, you know, the, the state that you're in, the emotional state you're in, uh, is, you know, something that can be managed by all kinds of different things by your environment, by what music you're listening to, by who you're with. Just by going out and do doing something else, uh, you know, going and having a walk or, uh, you know, making a nice meal and eating it or those kind of things. Mm, yes. Yeah. So what about those days when you end the day knowing that you've had the chance to live more? So for me, I say that's about doing more of the stuff that you want to do rather than the stuff you feel you should do or have to do. What, what does that day look like? Um. I think the spontaneous part of me uh, is kind of is going to stop me from giving any kind of uh, definitive answer to that because I think there uh -huh. could be lots of different versions. But it's definitely something where um, you know I, I feel like the day hasn't 
been wasted but, but by wasted i don't necessarily mean in a work sense or a kind of productivity sense i would say it's more um you know the, the, that kind of day uh where perhaps i have made someone else's day a lot better uh which is one of the things i love about my job when i'm in the training room you know if i've helped somebody with a, a real issue that they were having that can be a big part of it um if i've achieved something i can be pleased with so if i've been designing uh, a training session but it has um you know really come together and i feel like i've created something that that, that you know really taxed me but i've uh, i'm really pleased with it um or just where i've kind of found myself in in flow um you know in in something that's fun so i've, I've really kind of uh you know uh, had, had a really nice evening with friends and i've uh you know just had some of those conversations where you know you, you, you wonder where the time went um you know there's, there's lots of different versions of it but where i kind of look back and say okay yeah that that day is uh, absolutely one that you would be happy to put in your calendar again yes yeah i love the fact that you've sort of come up with a selection as well sometimes people are very sort of adamant that this is what it it would be like and uh it, it sometimes does feel a bit restrictive that uh you know there's so many different days that that could be one of those days so it's, it's good to have have a long list of them <laughs> but i love that as well you know to know that you'd like to do it again <laughs> yeah 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 mm -hmm. absolutely Lovely. Well, thank you so much for joining me on the podcast, Terry. It's been really interesting oh, talking to you. Really good to talk to you. Thanks, Joe. Uh, tell people how they can find out more about you and connect with you. Excellent. So, yeah, uh, you can find me on uh, Facebook uh, under Terry Pierce. Uh, you can come to my website, uh, work website of 360learningdesign.com. Uh, you can find me on LinkedIn uh, under Terry Pierce. Um, there's a probably the easiest ways i mean i'm on twitter and other ones as well but uh those are the ones that i kind of uh connect with most people on i would guess lovely thank you excellent thanks joe as ever the show notes for this show are on the website if you use the link power to live more.com forward slash 68 you'll be able to find them and the tool that i'm sharing on the newsletter this week is my smartphone or actually to broaden that out my ipad as well uh, as I may have mentioned last week, I'm in my caravan in the middle of a field visiting my family, uh, waiting for little Dozzy to break up from school. So I'm here on my own and I'm working from here and it's going reasonably well. I wish there was a bit more sun because the solar panel only really works when there's sun on it. <laughs> so I'm having to go into the local town and use the coffee shop and uh, use their electric to charge my devices uh, generally. But uh, what it's reminded me of is that the phone, smartphone and the um, iPad can really help you to get what you need done done. And in fact, there's probably only about three tasks a week that I have that I must do on my laptop. Uh, other than that, I can do everything else through my mobile devices. And in fact, I have my to do list set up with tags to tag the items that need to be done on the laptop and the things I can do on my iPad and the things that I can do on my phone so that I can use the right device at any given time. So if I'm out and about, I can hop onto my smartphone. Uh, if I'm uh, somewhere and uh, I have my iPad with me, then obviously I've got that option too. And then, as I said this week, there are a few things like the podcast, for example, where I do need to go onto my laptop. So I've tagged those tasks with laptop so that I can uh, basically work my way through those specific tasks when I have got my laptop available so that they're done rather than doing the things that I could do on my phone or on my iPad as well. So uh, just, just a reminder that the mobile devices we have are so much more powerful now than they were you know a few years ago and there's so much more that you can do particularly with the bigger screens and also with all the apps that are now available and I'm also finding my iPad has a, a big screen which means that uh, even if the app doesn't quite have the functionality that I want so for example LinkedIn I don't really like using the app on there um, because it's got a big screen I can just go to the browser and actually look at the web version of the site through that rather than needing to use the app anyway so I guess the message this week is about working out what you need to get done and working out the best way to do it and then making a process so that you can easily 
uh, know which things you need to do when, depending on where you're working and what you're working with, so that you can be as productive as you need to be. But also the bigger message is so that you have the time and the opportunity to go and do that living more, which, as you know, I say is all about doing the things that you want to do and not the things that you feel you should do or you have to do. So this week I'm, or right this minute, I'm sitting in my caravan in a lovely uh field well not a lovely field a field (laughs) in the middle of uh, nowhere in Scotland and there's a beautiful sunset streaming through the window and I'm able to finish off my podcast because my laptop has some charge left on it and do some other things because I've got my mobile devices as well I'm using my solar power to make sure that they're topped up so I can keep doing the things I need to do when I need to do them but uh, I'm also having that opportunity to as I say meet my family spend time enjoying myself and relaxing in a really lovely environment as well. So who knows, I might go off for a walk on the beach in a moment. (laughs) So as I said, the show notes for this show are at powertolivemore.com forward slash 68. And we look forward to catching you next week. Use your power to live more.